remain standing. Uh, Pastor Suzanne is going to lead us in the affirmation of faith. All right, friends, let us reaffirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The ushers will be uh, coming down the aisles, and uh, Randy, grab that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> we just set the tune to go with Lord build us a cabin in the corner Greet one another with the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Epistle lesson this morning comes from 1 Peter. We are in the third chapter, verses 13 through 22. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Uh huh. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. <laughs> by your child, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that you are maligned. Those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. 
he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. In baptism, which is prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of the dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our puppet people will call the children up, but I'm running down there now because I can't jump over that screen. James, you've always been nice to me. I did something very wrong, and now my mother is very mad at me. She will never forgive me, and worst of all, 
It's Mother's Day. Well, I can't imagine that your mom would be angry and not forgive you, especially on Mother's Day. But you don't know what I did. And I did it after she told me not to. James, what did you do? Well, it really, it really wasn't fair. But Mom was making some cookies for dessert. She said there were just enough cookies for everybody to have one and wait until after dinner. So, that's not a problem. Just don't eat one until after dinner like your mom told you. Well, that was what wasn't fair. She made my favorite cookie. What is your favorite cookie? Mine is oatmeal. They're so yummy, especially when they are right out of the oven and warm. Chocolate chip cookies right out of the oven is what made me follow the wrong path. I couldn't resist eating one. Yummy. Well, you probably need to learn how to resist that kind of temptation. What do you mean, temptation? Temptation is like a trap. It's something you want to do, but really know you should not do, like eating that cookie. What do you mean? I mean, you have to resist the temptation to eat the cookie. You need to not do what you did. You need to just say no to the cookie. It means to control yourself when you really want to do something that you know you shouldn't be doing. Sort of like what Jesus did when he was in the wilderness. Jesus wanted to eat a chocolate chip cookie? Well, no, not exactly. He was tempted to do things that he knew he shouldn't. But he didn't do them. He resisted the temptation, like you should have done with the cookie. So he didn't get a cookie then, did he? Nope. No cookies for Jesus. But he did not get trapped by temptation. So I guess I shouldn't have eaten that cookie, right? The truth is you should have waited until after dinner. But your mom wasn't mad. Your mom was mad because you disobeyed her and not because you ate a cookie. So what do you think I should do now? I think you should go home and tell her you're sorry, for starters. Then give her a big hug and see what happens next. OK, I'll try that. But do you really think that she'll forgive me? James, I think she has already forgiven you. But just to make sure, how about a little prayer? OK, I guess a prayer would be all right. My mom always tells me that prayers help. You go. No, I think it would be best for you to go. After all, you're the one that ate the cookie. Well, OK, but I always need help. How about we say this prayer together? OK, boys and girls, let's have a little prayer. Dear, Dear God, God, thank you for this day and, and for listening to our problems. We know that you love us and that, and that Mom, Mom loves us too. We're, We're thankful, thankful for our families and pray for the strength to resist temptation, even if it is a chocolate chip cookie. And all God's children say, Amen.
This is a Mother's Day prayer. God of provision and unconditional love, on this day when we acknowledge the importance of motherhood among us, we first give thanks that you are a loving parent to us all. From your well-being, all life was born, and in your bosom, all creation is nurtured. You have formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as a brood under your wing. You have united us as kindred members of one human family, and we are grateful to be your offspring together. We celebrate your divine love, reflected in human expressions of motherhood. We give you thanks for the mothers among us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily task. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, and persistence in their promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. May they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. We thank you for all the motherly figures, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, health care providers, neighbors, friends, loved ones, and many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. Grant them vigor to carry on their work and the satisfaction that the holy privilege of their task affords. We acknowledge to you, O oh God, that even amid our grateful celebration, Many of us come with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive biological children. Draw your tender spirit near their feelings of self-betrayal, impotence, and grief, and remind them that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. We pray for those who have suffered miscarriages, those fatigued by fertility treatments, and those struggling through the process of adoption. May they remember that in your power and through your church, they can still have a lasting legacy beyond themselves. For some, this day is marked by loneliness and grief as they spend this first Mother's Day as a widower, an orphan, an orphan or a parent who has lost a child. To those who today live in the wake of the death of a loved one, grant glimpses of the resurrection. Bring to them a steady restoration of their broken hearts. Allow them to live into their future with hope and empower them to carry out the legacy of lessons instilled within them. For some, this is a day that services ongoing tensions that exist within our personal relationships and family dynamics. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs, both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. We give you thanks for the wide spectrum of motherhood represented among us today, new mothers and young mothers whose children are in their most tender years, mothers of grown children who transition into empty nests and a new chapter of self-discovery. Mothers and grandmothers of advanced years whose twilight of life is marked by frailty of body but a potency of spirit. There is this accumulated reminder that though our lives are marked by transition and change, your nurture and affection for all your children remains the same. Therefore, remind us to live with a childlike faith, curious to every wondrous mystery attentive to your every instruction, obedient to your every command, and willing to share with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, who is a loving mother and father to us all, and in whose name we, your children, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Friends, I invite you now to hear with me the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. We're reading from the 14th chapter. This is the first of four chapters where Jesus uh, uh, takes his leave uh, from disciples uh, prior to the uh, arrest and crucifixion and resurrection. We're reading verses 15 through 24. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, and because he abides with you, he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the words that you hear is not, the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God this time let's go to God in prayer again and as we pray let's bring our own religious experience up to date by asking God to forgive us of all of our sins to cleanse our lives of all the things that should not be in them and to help us at this very moment be the persons for him he would have us be Now let us pray for at least three persons who are connected with us in this service, calling their names silently unto God and asking that he would bless them in a very special way during this service. Now let us remember those of this church and community who are sick or bereaved or having difficulties of any kind and pray God's blessings upon them. then I would ask with your eyes open you would pray for me as I speak to you dear God may the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight for it's in Christ's name that we pray amen we were in worship last Sunday and the first uh, first half or so of John 14 was read in that service uh, and uh, this particular passage has something that I had not really, I can't, I shouldn't say I didn't know it right, 
would that kind of be bad for preachers? I've been to school and stuff. But I just, just hadn't quite noticed this place where Jesus says, uh, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. I just, I like that. Now, clean up some, okay? Clean up some. But what God's saying, he's going to come and, and be there. I say clean up some because I, uh, I was with my cousin and my uncle. None of the women at, at home were there on the farm. And they had a long lane that came in, really from both sides. We could see it from this way. And they were experts at identifying cars, like who that was. If you ride into town with them like Thursday night to the grocery store, uh, my aunt and uncle, they could identify people from the back looking at how they sit in a car. You know, again, it wasn't a whole lot of cars, but I mean, we, we had them back then, but, but still. But anyway, they could identify that that was Paul Davis, the preacher's car. And Newt says, let's clean up. And so we had a lot of things just to push away real fast. And he never even got into the place where we were cleaning, just, just in the opening room, you know, the living room there. But the idea that the preacher was coming and that it, something could have been out of place, oh, my, oh, my. When I was a young pastor, I visited with a family, a little couple, and a Doberman pincher that was eating a pork chop bone on the floor right in the midst of all of that. I said, well, that's okay, that's okay. Well, I got ready to leave. I was driving a, a, I thought it was a great car, Sunbird. Not, not, anyway, I thought it was. Uh, straight shift, you know. And as I was getting ready to leave in the mirror, that dog, minus the pork chop, sitting in my back seat real close to me, okay? Real close to me. Popped the clutch. It took us a long time to get that car started. And, I, well, you got to be careful about dogs and things like that. That's all right to do. But, but the idea, that's a home. And Jesus says, we're going to come and be with you. Like that, like that, like that. The, the word there for, for home is uh, mone. It's, it's, it's a bunch of words that come. Meno, Greek language, is uh, the verb for abide. That's here earlier in this passage. He's going to abide with you. When disciples in John's gospel first saw Jesus, they said, Jesus, where are you going to? Where do you abide? Where do you stay? Y'all remember Jesus says, come and see. People got to go and be with Jesus. Jesus, as he is getting ready for crucifixion, is saying, hey, I'm going to come and be with y'all be with y'all. Early in chapter 14, the, it's the dwelling places. In my father's house are many dwelling places. The word there is Monet, the dwelling place. Uh, in the old, well, King James Version Bible, in my father's house are many mansions. Yeah. Think of Monet, you can get to the mansion. We had some church had like this uh, suretyship campaign called Show Me the Monet. Okay? <laughs> I think it caught on pretty, I assume it went very well, you know, but, but think Monet, think mansion, but also think cabin in the corner of glory land. Everyone doesn't want a mansion, doesn't need to have a mansion, but if God has given it to us, what a good thing, what a good thing that that can be there for us. And we, we sometimes think more about getting, say, to that mansion or that cabin in glory land. We sometimes think more about what Jesus promises us for the future than we think and appreciate what he's promising for the right now, that he wants to come and live with us right now. Jesus wants to be. We have ways to say that, don't we? Invite Jesus into our hearts. How long has it been since y'all sang together, do, Lord? You have not sung it under my pastorship, have you? Any, any, any remembrances when? 
Bible school when I was, what, eight years old? Okay, it's been a long time. Okay, okay. But I took Jesus. They, they used, we used to sing, little children, I took Jesus to be my Savior. You take him too. Invite Jesus into your heart. Make sure Jesus is at your home. You know, all those places. And, and it's, a, it's a characteristic of John's gospel that things get like all pulled together like at one time. On the Sunday after Easter, we read from John 20. I think I was preaching that service where Jesus first says, I received the Holy Spirit and, and blows on them. And I said, Jesus, Pentecost is 50 days from now, actually 43. And, but in John's gospel, it's happening right all together. And here in chapter 14, the last half, Jesus is saying, we're going to come make our home with you. We're taking, making a place for you in heaven. And we're coming back to be with you. All, everything about where we're going with Jesus, all coming uh, at one place. And Jesus does care about us living well with family. Church family, physical family, community, nation, world. You know, God's idea in creation is not that the entirety of his created order is built for conflict. But that's almost all the news is, right? almost from every place. And no matter what we think about any, anything, please, please agree to think with me, God does not want destruction, does not want hatred, does not want meanness, does not want someone to win and everyone else to lose, none of that stuff. I mean, we just gotta be clear about that. He has a, a bigger and a better purpose and he's counting on you to be ones to show that you know, as you go. What does First Peter say? Tell them about Jesus in all gentleness, meekness. You don't have to hit people over the head with Jesus. You just have to act like the loving person that he makes you to be. I'm glad for that. Jesus in First Peter 3 it says that he went to preach, proclaim the news, preach in prison. After he'd been crucified, before he was resurrected. You know, he didn't go to, uh, you know, the, the place down on the river. I, I, don't, I, I go to jails, but I don't always know the names of them. He went to the big prison, right? Went to the to the dead, to Hades, to the underworld, to people who had not had a chance to believe in him. And that's extraordinary, isn't it? Could it be that any one of us thinks that Jesus would not go to or for anyone we would name? Could you in any way believe that he loves everybody but not quite you? I'm sorry, but some people pretend that could be true. You know, we all make some mistakes, don't we? I'll let Jordy sit down, but I'll say, everyone sit down if you made a mistake. Is that, it's not Jordy, Justin, I'm sorry. Tell you, if, I'd have, if I had hair, y'all would know I had it. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, if I had hair, y'all would know it. Y'all would know it. That's good. That's good. Uh, but, but Jesus just loves all of us, every single one. And Jesus says, I'm going to make a home for you. At the end of John's gospel, Jesus is on the cross. And in, in just John's gospel, he Talk, John talks about that at the cross is the mother of Jesus. 
Do y'all know that part about John? I, I want you to. I, I think you would. John's the only gospel that talks about that, but she is at the... He, he never calls her Mary. She's always the mother of Jesus. Jesus doesn't call her mom either, does he? Doesn't call her mama. What does Jesus call his mother Mary? Y'all remember? Woman? Thank you, Joey. Woman. Yeah, and Joey, you think he said it nicely, don't you? Uh, yeah, I'm, okay, thank you, sir. We're, we're clear on that. And, and let me just clarify, too, that, that really that was an, a very appropriate, respectful, good word. Uh, and, but he says, woman, behold your son. Not me, but the disciple that's right there. John doesn't name that disciple either. But he says, behold your son. And to the disciple, uh, you're, behold your mother. And then the Bible says, and from that hour, he took her to his own now, we put the home word in there, okay? The own is the, that's, that's the idea. I checked in the King James Version, okay? I've got one in my study. I've got the Bible that my granddaddy, Joseph Thomas Carson, just plain, okay, senior, gave to my uh, grandmother. And the, the, one of the times Bishop Lewis had us read through the whole Bible, I, or, I, for the New Testament, it's King James. It is large print. Any of y'all like large print? Large print. I like it. That was good. So I checked it there. And the word home is, is in italics. The King James Version, if it's not in the translation part, we're translating from, it kind of puts it there. But that's a place for home. Monet. That's a place for home where, where she's going to take. And it's a very, very sad time, Right? And sad that Jesus' mother is there as he's being executed. And yet, she's right there. And Jesus takes care of her, makes a plan for her. Now, I'm going to say something I absolutely have never seen before in Scripture to remember it. And look, okay, help me because I know... We have read in worship mainly, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke about the, the crucifixion, that whole story. Y'all helped to read that. Very seldom do we do John. You might say, Pastor, let's do John this next time, okay? Oh, well, Marie, I'll do what you say. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but I haven't noticed that. Then, so the mother of Jesus is there, but then also, listen, also, they're right down, yes. Uh, his mother's sister was there. Aren't you glad? Who in here has a sister? Y'all, any some of y'all have sisters? I mean, because, yeah, yeah. Brothers? I have a brother. Okay, yeah. Oh, it's good to have. Uh, and he doesn't say that Mary's name is Mary, okay, the writer of John. But he does say that his mother's sister, her name is Mary. Now, I don't like it at all that families named people with the same names. I'm Joseph the third, and we got Joseph the fourth at home. But, you know, but no, but, but, and listen, seriously, I think it's a proof of the Bible, because if they made it up, they would sure make up some different names in Mary. But look in the Bible dictionary. You got a bunch of Marys to kind of get through to see exactly which one you're talking about. Mary, she was the wife of Clophus, that's the right word, not Cleophas, but they're both just once in the Bible. And, but, but we'll name the husband, but also name Mary here. I'm glad the sister's there. Isn't it important for us to know that when there's a, that's just a loss of a, of a mother's child, isn't it? Mary, the mother of Jesus, her, her child is gone, but somehow God's got sister there with her. Somehow God's got beloved disciple with her. And you know, with things that go on, let's always be ready to recognize how God might be bringing some bit of love or comfort or help. And if ever it's impressed upon your heart that you're that person to do the helping, oh, how God will bless you doing that. There are not words to describe what it could mean 
Mary, the mother of Jesus, I mean, she talked with her sister Mary so many times about what it meant for you to be there. I don't know where that woman had to tra travel from. I don't know anything about any of it. But listen, anybody doing something good for Jesus' family, we're ready to support that, aren't we? Anytime that's going on. And that happens in Colonial Heights. And that happens in Virginia. It happens in lots of almost every place in the world. And let it be that we are always open to and wanting that. Jesus has a place for us in heaven. And we're thankful of knowing people that are there. But we're thankful, too, that Jesus is right here with us. He can connect us to those. And he can connect us to people that he loves and wants to save. We'll sing about the spirit of the living God. Uh, and let that be our, uh, our closing for this day. Let us stand as we're able, O Spirit of the living God. see the benediction go forth in peace and joy to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do and the blessings of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore amen <laughs>